Ah, mailbag Monday once again. My favorite day of the week. Not only because I get to have a good beer and uh, open the mail. Well, actually, no. That, that, that is what it is. Um, today's beer is Two Wolves Premium Canadian Ale from Great, Plain, or Great Plains Brown Ale. Uh, from Two Wolves Brewing. Where are these guys? They are in Regina, of all places. Hmm. A deep copper color with aromas of roasted malt, cocoa, and caramel. A highly engaging beer. Medium body, high carbonation. That's not bad at all. I don't mind that. Um, so the first thing in is a grinding head. And you notice that I used uh, that little anonymizer, little roller thing that I got in a, a few mailbags back. Unfortunately, it kind of is smeary, so that's not going to work out. Yeah. That's horrible. Okay, anyway. So let's see what grinding head really is. Oh, it's little Dremel grinder things. Okay. Oh, I think these are kind of a rubberized abrasive. Let's see if I can get in a little bit closer here. Uh, yeah, these are a kind of a rubberized abrasive, which I think a brand name of this stuff is Kratex. Um, at least that's what I was looking for anyway, when I got it, um, if it, if that is what this is, then that's one of the products that a commercial, one of the commercial brands of, uh, model railroad track cleaning car uses, and it just rolls along at a slight angle with the track cleaning car. So it's sort of creating a bit of a, it rolls, but it kind of it does it at a skew. Do you have a piece of track around here? Yeah, so if it's if it rolls like this, it's not going to do any any scrubbing. But if it's set at an angle like that, notice it's wanting to. If it's on a decent enough bearings, anyway, it'll kind of move like that, and we'll sort of do a little bit of a light abrasive scrub on the track. And then if you follow that up with the uh, the wet cleaner. And the Masonite pad cleaner, track cleaning cars that I've got, then that should do a fairly effective job of cleaning even quite dirty track. I'm hoping anyway. 10 times cylindrical rubber polishing head abrasive grinding burr mounted 0.5 millimeters B. I got this from Rebecca8818. Um, I paid $2.61 with free shipping, currently $2.74 for free shipping, so that's not too bad. Used for precision grinding and polishing, it can make a surface of a workpiece achieve higher levels of surface finish, such as mirror, etc. Does not burn the workpiece, does not need grinding paste, hard wearing, doesn't say much else. This one says electronics times one. Okay, not descriptive, but definitely, probably reasonable. It is a, a bag of three millimeter red LEDs. Didn't I get some white LEDs last time? Yeah, this is just restocking after the Canada Day project. Um, as usual, I just like to have common stuff in stock so that when the mood strikes me to do a project, I have what I need. 100 pieces diffused LED, three millimeter red color, red light, super bright CA new from CA Electronics 8. Uh, a whole 99 cents for the hundred of them. Yeah, nothing much to say about them down here. I mean, what is there to say about them? They're little red LEDs. Next in, measuring meter, it says. Hmm. A little plastic box. With tape holding it closed. That doesn't look like a measuring meter to me. Let's cut that tape off. That looks like handy vac. This is a another vacuum pickup tool or suction pickup tool for picking and placing parts. Um, it's got what do we got here? Four nozzles. 
um, of various different sizes. Those two, those two look like they are the same size. And then there is a kind of a medium sized one and a larger sized one. Okay. Let's start with the big one. Just see if we can pick things up. Yeah, it can pick stuff up. And it's holding on to it very effectively too. Let's try it from this side though. Yeah, I can feel it loosening. That's reasonable. Although I'm not going to be putting a lot of those on circuit boards. Let's try this medium sized one on a 555. Okay, we'll pick up dip parts. And it's holding it very well. So that's good, but larger parts aren't really what these things are designed for. It's for dealing with these big nabbed little SMD parts. Okay. So that's not too bad. Let's see what else have I got in here? Oh, there's some transistors. This is just the uh, random parts left over from one of those SMD soldering practice kits. So these are SOT23 transistors. Let's see if I can get down onto that. Oh, I can pick it up. Okay. Not for very long though. You have to be pretty precise too by the looks of it. But you can do it and then place it. Okay. Doesn't want to come off actually. What else we got in here? How about that little guy? That's an 805 uh, something or other. <laughs> Doesn't want to play nice. Maybe my aim's just a bit off. I'm not sure. <laughs> Seems to uh, be a, a little bit uncooperative. I'm not quite sure why that is. Maybe it's my technique. Let's try the other little tip and see if that does anything. And flip this guy back over again. Give me some chance. Hmm. Doesn't seem to want to play nice. And of course I've got some even tinier capacitors in there, but I'm not even going to bother trying that. Oh well, it's... Uh, it's good for some things. I don't know how much surface mount I'm going to be doing, but you never know. It doesn't hurt to have the tools. And I think this one is better than the one that I previously got. Let me just go grab that. Yeah, here's the one that I previously got. And actually, will it use the same tips? It might just. Let's try that medium tip and see if it'll pick up that IC. Yeah, it's vacuum leaks a little bit. And the biggest problem with it is the tip that came with it came bent and cracked. So it's got a couple of little rubber tips as well. So, yeah. I don't know. I'm pretty sure this was an inexpensive experiment, so I'm not too bummed that it doesn't work, but it would have been nice if it did work for more than just uh, these larger ICs, which I can grab with the tweezers anyway. Handy new IC SMD vacuum handy handling tool pickup sucking pin RT number six uh, from Rule Tower. I got this at auction for 47 cents. Which I guess is why I decided to take a gamble on it. Um, currently going at regular price for $3.14 from the same seller. Four suction headers are provided with this suction pin for picking and placing surface mount components and parts. High vacuum pickup force. It's better than the other one. Ideal for SMD ICs. Yeah, it works okay for ICs. But not so much for smaller other components. Next in, we have... Another one that I use that gooey stuff on. Uh, modules is what it says. Just have to be careful I don't slime my fingers on that or rub the ink off so that you see where I am. Uh, 
Modules. Oh, we do have modules, plural. Nice. What are you guys? That looks like a DHT 11, probably temperature sensor on a board. It says DHT shield. Oh, what form factor of shield is that? Is that the D1 Mini? I think so. Okay, and what is this other one here? Uh, that is a battery shield, it says. So being a shield, yeah. And those things, I think... The cool thing about shields, if you're choosing to use them, is that they stack. It's kind of like that, sort of. I mean, you'd use proper pins, but, you know, you can stack them up. The only downside is uh, when you've got multiple sensor pins yeah, or sensor type shields or input output type shields, you have to make sure they're all using different pins. And in this case, it looks like it's using pin number four, as you can see there. That's kind of cool. And it's got some kind of insulation over top of the backside. Anyway, that's just a standard DHT. I think that's the 11. So 22, I think, is smaller than that. But so it's not the world's most precise temperature uh, shield. <sighs> this is bugging me. A little sharp piece of fiberglass sticking out the corner there. That's better. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's not the most precise. They're usually rated plus or minus a couple of degrees, and they take a little bit of time to read. But that's okay. I mean, for reading ambient air temperature, do you really need it updated multiple times a second? And on here, looks like we have a lithium-ion battery connection, a USB connection, a couple of diodes, a little chip beside an inductor, which is no doubt a boost and or buck. Um... And looks like a couple of LEDs on there. All right. Let's just plug in a USB cable and see what happens. One of the lights comes on. Okay. So presumably there's going to be 5 volts and 3.3 volts created out of this thing, I would guess. Do I have a D1 Mini handy? Uh, I don't seem to at the moment. I've got uh, a couple of Barry SPs and a full-size D1. Uh, oh yeah, right, I'm using it in the project that you'll see in a few weeks. Um, yeah, but I think I've got some more D1s on the way anyway, so I'm going to play with that at that time. D1 Mini Wemos DHT11 Single Bus Digital Temperature Humidity Sensor Shield Module from GC Supermarket. Uh, when I bought it, it was $1.31 Canadian, which would have been $0.99 cents American. Um, and free shipping, of course, but uh, price seems to have changed slightly since then. Also from GC Supermarket, battery shield for Wemos D1 Mini single lithium battery boost, or charging and boost. Currently going for dollar ninety four Canadian. Again, I got it for dollar thirty one or ninety nine American when I bought it several months ago. What does it say here? One connect the lithium battery. You know, lithium battery connects in there. Micro USB, yeah, there's a green LED and a red LED. Just connect the lithium battery to the shield, power it, power the whole thing, charge when battery runs out. You don't need to unplug the battery or anything. Green is charging complete, which makes sense because there's no current being drawn by the battery when I was playing with it because there was no battery attached. And red means it's charging. J1, there's a jumper on there to set the max charging current, either 0.5 or 1 amp. Oh, there's J1. It's a little solder jumper on the back. Half or one amp, but it doesn't say... Oh, there we go. J1, uh, one amp is closed. Open is half an amp. So its default mode is half an amp, which is the safer option. Good, good, good. And the last package in is electronics. That's not really surprising. What do we have in here? We have... Looks like potentiometers. Yes, it is. These are no dual potentiometers, aka stereo potentiometers. These are 10K, it says on the back of there. You got three of them. 
two of which have fairly bent pins. And these look like they might actually be breadboard friendly types. Except for they won't go over the gutter, but they will plug into a breadboard, which means they'll also plug into a perf board, which doesn't mind about the uh, lack of center gutter here. But yeah, that's kind of annoying. Oh, well, um, I didn't buy those for general use on breadboards. I bought them because I have a project in mind. There's a, a guy named Dustin Watts who has a, uh, he's an audio engineer in Holland in the Netherlands. Um, and he did a fairly cool little project, a little headphone amplifier uh, based on actually a, a, an op amp, a dual op amp that I got many, many mailbags back of just been slowly bringing in the parts to uh, make myself a copy of his uh, headphone amp, which to be fair, he, he is borrowing somebody else's design, but he's updated it, modified it a little bit. So um, yeah, I'll be, I'll be building that little uh, circuit just for fun. Cause I like little audio amps. I, I used to work in audio as you may or may not be aware. I used to work in broadcast radio and uh, do a little bit of live sound and stuff. So having a little portable headphone amp is just something that tickles my tickles me a little bit. I don't know how much I'll use it, but that's not the point. I just want to have fun with these things. Isn't that the point of this whole thing? Can't we just have some fun around here? Three pieces B10K dual potentiometer pots, 15 millimeter split shaft, six pin. From Satisfy Electronics, I did in fact pay a dollar thirty Canadian, which is 99 American pennies with free shipping well, pretty good deal actually although it's a little cheesy that it's a three-piece package and they're showing five of them always read the fine print yeah there's not much to say they are 10k ohm b type taper which is linear not ideal for audio applications but it's not gonna break the bank uh they're carbon film which are again not ideal um you'd normally want uh the polyester type i believe it is but the carbon film are fine they're not going to introduce too much noise not not enough that i'm going to care anyway uh 15 millimeter shaft length six millimeter shaft diameter yeah 25 millimeter hole length aka one inch for those of you who speak that language yeah um so here is today's mailbag item assortment Kind of a fun and varied one again. Shipping times. The vacuum pickup pin took about six weeks. The bag O LEDs took three weeks. The polishing and grinding abrasive things took 21 days. The potentiometers took three and a half weeks. And the Wemos D1 mini shields took four weeks. So that's not too bad. Um, it's, I've had stuff take a lot longer, um, but three to four weeks seems to be the going rate right now anyway, or a couple months ago when these things started rolling in anyways. Um, so yeah, these things, even if I can't get my track cleaning car mod thing to work the way I'd envisioned it, these are still good little polishing wheels for putting on the Dremel. Um, this thing, eh. 50 cents, whatever. Stock, project, stock slash feature projects. As usual, fun, fun, fun. Um, yeah, so uh, that's that's everything for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping me finance this silliness and buying me a beer now and again. I really appreciate that. And this is a good beer, even though it does come from Saskatchewan. It's still a good beer. I'll give them their due. I mean, they, they grow barley out there too, so they must know a thing or two about it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.